everybody, Laz here. All right, in my last couple of lives, I've had students talk about the EIG, EIGRP routing protocol in their Cisco CCNA 200-301 certification. Yes, that's the number, CCNA 200-301 certification, that they've been asked questions. Now, I wanna clar clarify this up once and for all, I wanted to see what's going on with that. So one of the first things that I did, I went to the uh, Cisco.com website, all right? And uh, let me bring it down here so you guys can see that it is Cisco's website, all right? It's nothing that I made up. It is the Cisco website. I went into their actual, I mean, let me go back. Went into their exams, right, for the 200-301. Okay, and then what I did is I wanted to look at the blueprint, all right, for the C, for the 200-301, implementing and administering Cisco CCNA solutions. Okay, so I went here, the exam, download the exam blueprint, all right, so you can click on there, and then this pops up. I already downloaded it, but I'm not going to burden you, you know, let me go into the PDF, I'm just going to show you right here. On their website you can download it. obviously you click here and you can download it you can see for yourself now people have said to me on the live and I'm not trying to I'm not disbelieving them at all okay I'm trying to see hey what's going on all right so when we look at network fundamentals we have we have we have to know about routers layer 203 switches access points uh, controllers for the Cisco DNA Center and wireless endpoint servers Tier, uh, two tier, three tier, spanning leaf, WAN, blah, blah, blah. Home off, okay, pretty simple, right? No oil, no, no, no EIGRP there. So let's look at network access. Let's go there, okay, we got VLANs, trunking, native VLANs, lag P. Well, we got layer two and layer three, uh, ether channel going on, spanning tree stuff, again, more wireless stuff. All right, we have radius in here as well, SSH, all the stuff, wireless creations, okay. No routing protocols here. So here's where the bulk of it is, uh, apparently. 25% of your test is based on IP connectivity. And what hits you right off the bat, there's OSPF version two, there's IPv6 static routing. I don't see EIGRP. I see administrative distances, there's not a link you can drill down into. I don't see anything like that, I see uh, you know, everything that has to do with BR, DDR, not really everything that has to do with OSPF, but okay. So there's no EIGRP where it's IPv4, or IPv6 in this blueprint that they put for the test. Okay. So I keep looking, you know, you know, I, you gotta, when you're doing stuff like this, you gotta keep going on and see what's here. We look at IP services. This is DACP, SNMP, D, uh, uh, explain the forwarding of a per hop behavior, QoS, okay, security fundamentals, and then we have the automation and programmability, which obviously has nothing to do with the routing protocol. This has to do with their new, newer stuff uh, that, yeah, it's not that. So I'm like, okay, so it's not that. Let me put this back over here on my other screen. So I went in, I got the books. I got the Cisco Press book. I got them right here. All right, let me see this chair over here. We're going to be talking about the CCMP, whoop, whoop, CCIE. Okay, and I have the official, whoo, official cert guide, CCNA 200-301, there it is, volume one, all right, which is the only one that talks about uh, yeah, uh, EIGRP, it does mention EIGRP, and I'm going to show you right now. So, in the CCNA 200-301 Cisco Pressbook, volume one, chapter 19, page 442, it's a routing protocols bullet. All right, it says, defines what routing protocols are generally and uses the following as examples. Or also, it's mentioned. It's mentioned, hey, these are routing protocols. RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, and BGP. Okay. All right, so they just threw it in there. All right, hey, this is what it is. Cool. Three pages later, same chapter, it's comparing IGPs. All right, cool. We'll get into the comparisons. First thing it says, most companies today use either OSPF or EIGRP. Awesome, not in your blueprint. Awesome, OSPF or EIGRP. But before I keep going, all right, I just want to read to you this from this book, okay? 
Don't open up the page. And again, I want to clarify. So when you guys are studying out there, you know, you know exactly what you need to, to know, right? This is why I'm putting the page numbers. Now, in the Cisco Roman numeral number two, okay, it says uh, Roman numeral number two. As soon as you open the page, as soon as you open the book, let me see me right here. As soon as you open it, it's two pages in, okay? Uh, it says the copyright uh, is uh, 2020, Pearson Education, Inc. It, there's a warning and a disclaimer there. Is, and I'm going to go read this, not read the whole thing. I'll just read the last little paragraph. Okay, well, there's, an inf well, there's one little sentence I want to read in the beginning, in the second paragraph. The information is provided on an as-is basis. The authors, Cisco Press and Cisco Systems, Inc., shall not, oh, I'm sorry, shall have neither, excuse me, shall have neither liability nor responsibility to any persons or entity with respect to any loss or damages arising from the information contained in this book or from the use of the discs or programs that may accompany, uh, accompany it. And then the last paragraph states, the opinions, I never knew this was a novel, okay? I guess we're still working with hypothesis, all right? We haven't come to a solution. The opinions expressed in this book belong to the author and are not necessarily those of Cisco Systems. So that's a disclaimer. So when you're reading your books, one of the things that I tell everybody, okay, uh, look, read it from page to page to make sure exactly you know what you're getting into, all right? So when I went through this, because you know, I wanna make sure that all you guys out there that are, because I had you guys yesterday on my live, I wanna make sure that you guys are getting the proper information and know where to seek out the information that they're probably putting on the test, okay? So, well, and I already said about, you know, in page, chapter 19, page 442, chapter 19, page 442, it says writing protocol, it's just saying, hey, here's your page of writing protocol. Oh, okay, cool. All right, three pages later, most companies use either OSPF or EIGRP. Oh, all right, okay. But we're not going to talk about it here. In the CCMP Enterprise certification, we're adding EIGRP. Cool. So we'll talk about that. That'll be our last slide. In the CCMP book, which I have right here, all right, we see that it talks about EIGRP at the CCMP level, mm -hmm. which this is, remember, this is not just CCMP. This is CCMP and CCIE written, okay? Oh, man, it's okay. All right, cool. Because now there's only a CCIE hands-on all the way, right? All right cool, cool. All right, all right. So then the third bullet says, the next section first discusses some of the main goals of every IGP, comparing OSPF, EIGRP, plus a few other IPv4 running protocols. All right, all right, we're gonna get, we're gonna get comparisons. We're gonna get comparisons, outstanding. So I keep going through the book, still chapter 19, page 446, key topics. In the 1980s, RIP and IGRP distance vectors. That's what they use. So they use RIP, they use IGRP. Uh, they find out real quick that, yeah, these things can't handle the load, right? It's just, it's not feasible uh, for the routers. You know, it just, it just can't handle the growth, the scalability. So in the 1990s, apparently, OSPF and ISIS, which are link state type routing protocols. Oh, I misspelled fix. Let me fix that right now. That's why I left it in this mode. Fix that issue of, I mean, get rid of that. Fix the issue of scalability. Yeah, not so. Well, it did fix this issue of scalability, but it wasn't OSPF. ISIS came before OSPF. How do I know this? Because I'm teaching this course now, my SIS master class course, whatever you want to call it, on globe.net. Okay? So ISIS is the first thing that came around. Then they say, oh, let's create OSPF. All right? Across the world. Companies were changing to ISIS. Europe, when they were running RIP and IGRP, they said, hey, man, look, they're running ISIS. We only need one address per router. We don't need a, an IP address. It's network layer independent. We're not worried about that. It's awesome. Okay. But as usual, as usual, weak knees, they bend to the masses. Due to fear and aff affluential, that's a true word, affluential, money, 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 people, OSPF became the standard. All right. I mean, OSPF did fix the issue, right? But it was not the original link state writing protocol. All right. And OSPF is very rigid. We're going to give you a class on OSPF. 
Uh, but OSPF is very rigid in its design as far as you must connect back to area zero, either physically or as a virtual link. That's not the case with ISIS, but I digress. All right, so they also speak of creating in the same page. They also speak of creating EIGRP around the same time that fixed the issue of RIP and IGRP will not dull. We know this, that's why it's called the enhanced, well, it used to be called a hybrid. Now it's called the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. Well, why is that? It's because it's better than IGRP. It supports a lot more things than, EI, than IGRP. And RIP, obviously, we all know, and those are there are brand new to networking, yes, RIP is not a solution for your network. And again, the solution for your network is based on your topology. Uh, how complex and how big it is depends on the routing protocol you're going to use. All right? All right. So like I say there, it's still not enough to scale extremely to large ISPs and the birth of the WWW, what we just call the internet. The internet has been around forever, okay? But in 1989, it was commercialized. When that happened, they said, oh, sh oops, oops, <laughs> messed up. Uh, EGRP is not good enough. So when they're talking about 1990s, all right, that around that time, EGRP, no. EGRP was not the solution for wide area networks, especially with the birth of the World Wide Web in 1989, okay? So, kept going, and have faith. Volume one, book, chapter 19, page 446. This is one of the things that they tell you about EGRP. Oh, this is cool, okay, for RIP uses hop count. Yeah, we know that, right? Maximum hop count on RIP is 15. Awesome, all right. The number of routers, hops, two routers, right? OSPF is cost. The sum of all interface cost setting for all links in a route with a cost defaulting to be based on the interface bandwidth. Okay, so it's bandwidth, it's called a cost. Okay. EIGRP, calculation based on bandwidth and delay. Calculated based on routes slowest link and the cumulative delay associated with each interface in the route. Is that the only metrics? The EIGRP uses? No. In the 200-125, in the 200-120, in the 640-802, and all those, we spoke on EIGRP, and we spoke, or well, I, at least I did, because uh, my classes are still there <laughs> in, EIG, in globate.net from 125, and in the 200 one You think I don't explain EIGRP? Of course I do, because there's five K values. The ones that are on by default are bandwidth and delay, but there's also reliability, load, and MTU. Yeah, yeah, don't say that. And they're called K values. You can look it up when you do a show interface, F00, let's say. You can see the K values right there. All right. So, okay, so this gives a very basic information. Okay, thank you so much. Now I know what I'll be testing on so far. Okay. Ah, here we go. We got figures. Volume one, book, chapter 19, page 447. There's a figure, 19-3. It's comparing in a figure. It means they have the little top three routers in a little topology, and they're and they're comparing the metrics. Wait a minute, RIP and OSPF. You said because I say here not EGRP and OSPF. You promised that on page four forty five. It said it right here. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, uh, where did they say that? Due to fear across the world, OSPF. Where did they say that? Where did they say that? Oh, right here. The next section first discusses some of the main goals of every IGP and comparing, this is in quotes, ladies and gentlemen. I took it straight from the book and I'm giving you the page. Comparing OSPF and EIGRP. Nope. In the figure, they're, config they're comparing RIP and OSPF, which is a little drawing of three routers coming to each other. Say, look, these are the metrics. Okay. All right, that's a figure. So I go down further down in the page, page 447 uh, of the volume one, chapter 19. Then there's a table. Wow, there's a table. Okay, cool. What are the, uh, we're comparing IGP protocols. Who supports what? Okay, so you tell, okay, so now VLSM, all right. Red version two, EIGRP and OSPF, BGP, ISIS, ISIS they all support VLSM. Who's the distance vector or link state? 
We know this. We know RIP is a disinfector. So is EIGRP. I don't care if you call it enhance, it's a distance vector. And it is Cisco proprietary. But just look at the third bullet. Just browse to it, I'll get to it in a second. Uh, talks about how it sends routing updates, right? Using multicast addresses. Awesome, doesn't say which multicast addresses, but it tells you that it says it's using multicast addresses. Routing updates, okay? And then, you know, how quick does it converge? Converges time. Again, I don't see no configuration, nothing talking about autonomous systems, nothing. Okay. So at the bottom of the page, it says, Cisco chose to publish EIGRP as informational RFC in 2013 to allow other vendors to implement EIGRP. Yeah, no. Didn't work. <laughs> Didn't work. All right. Nobody uses it as a wide area network protocol. Okay. No, you can use it at a distribution layer. Hell, in the spider leaf topology, EIGRP is not used. In their own volume two for the spider leaf topology, it's all layer three and the protocol of choice is ISIS. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so I'm still in chapter 19. My God, page 448. Oh, you need to know the administrative distance, ladies and gentlemen. If they're Listen, what questions are they asking you on that test? Because they talk about EIGRP here. You see they're talking about it. They're giving you the administrative distance. They're giving you the that it uses bandwidth and delay. They're telling you about... Met, are they telling about... No, they're not telling about metrics. Okay. Uh, well, they're older the metrics. Bandwidth and delay. So they're giving you some information. All right. And that back in the early 90s, was it? And around the time that OSPF and ISS, they did EGRP too, that fixed the issue of RIP and IGRP. So they are giving you some information. But you know me, I always go, I, yeah, RIP is 120, EGRP is 90, OSPF is 110. According to Cisco, ISIS is 115. But it depends on the type of level of ISIS you're using. It could be 15, 18, 160, 165. No, we're in there to say 115. But okay, you know, I don't know whatever. Oh yeah, this just configure it. You see my labs. Uh, IB, uh, IBGP is 200 and EBGP is 220. What you need to understand, I think this is what they're trying to tell us. What you need to understand that the lowest administrative distance is the one that takes over. So if you have all these running protocols in one router, which you're not, okay, you're going to have the one with the lowest AD take over. But wait a minute. Stand by. ISIS is a layer two routing protocol used for a different purpose. It's used for routing, obviously, but differently than the layer three routing protocols. And BGP is an application used for different things as well. So why would you? Okay, forget it. Know your administrative distances. And all these ADs can be tweaked, by the way. You can change it if you want. But by default, by default, that's what they are. All right. So I finally said, man, this gotta be, okay. So I went to chapter 22, page 529. All right, some good information. Defines that Cisco owns the right to EAGRP and publishes informational RFCs. So basically what I found in volume one is the administrative distance that is being published for information that what it supports, they didn't compare it to OSPF they're giving me a table that it calculates based on bandwidth and delay. Uh, they're telling me that it was created in the 1990s, all right, to help with a RIP and IGRP, which it really, it may have, but OSPF took over and ISS was already working since 1987, okay? And hey, they're telling us the is a running protocol, all right? And that most companies do use OSPF and IGRP. So that's what volume one tells you. So keep that in mind when you're taking your test. Now, they did state that CCMP right here, see in page 19, I mean, chapter 19, page 445, that the CCMP certification is adding EGRP. They weren't lying. I got, I got the book. I got the book right here. They were not lying. It's chapter seven. Chapter seven, no configuration whatsoever. It has 11 pages. So throughout this vast 
detailed 11 pages of explanation of the EIGP protocol, these are the topics that they talk about. It uses autonomous systems. We knew this, okay? Uh, if you're brand new to networking, I can see where you wouldn't know that, but you can take a network plus, it'll teach you that and more. Uh, terminology, what types of terminology? Successor routes, successor, feasible distance, uh, RDF, or reported distance, I'm sorry, reported distance, feasibility conditions, feasible, all, all this stuff is a calculation that it does. You see this right down here? All this, look, reliability, delay, load, they didn't talk about it. And the CCNA, they said that we'd be talking about it here. Okay, but wait a minute, isn't this CCIE as well? This is all the information, not in the old CCIE written. I can tell you that right now for a fact. Okay, all right. All right. So we talk about the how to look at the topology table. Network Plus shows you that. I show you that in CCNA and Network Plus. Okay, the packet types, the metrics, the wide metrics, the load balancing, and a whole bunch of other stuff that, but it doesn't show you how to configure EHRP whatsoever. So I'm doing this right now just to show you, but I will be bringing up a brand spanking new lab probably tomorrow, okay? Or maybe later on today, I don't know, but it won't be put out to tomorrow about EIGRP. This is what, in volume two, there's nothing, zero information about EIGRP. Volume one, I just showed you the chapters and pages of what information they're giving you on EIGRP so you can look at those pages so you can be ready to take that exam, all right? I'm straight from the book. But if you really want to know about EIG, if you want to know about all the writing freaking protocols, the, at least the most common ones now, because now is where I'm putting ISIS, you need to go to globed.net, okay? I teach EIGRP, I teach RIP, I teach OSPF, I teach BGP, okay? And I teach ISIS. I teach you all the writing protocols the concepts and how to configure them. And why the hell are you configuring them? As a network engineer, you need to know this, okay? If you don't, you're not a network engineer. You're a network operator and you're using that Rancher GUI to click, click, click while somebody else did configure Kubernetes or Dockers or whatever the hell they're using, okay? So it can make it easy for you to do. So I've given you, I mean, book, chapter, and page. Now you know what to look at, okay, from each book, each page, and what they possibly can ask for you. And on top of that, I went to the Cisco website, okay, and we looked at their blueprint. And when we go to IP connectivity, all right, I see nothing here talking about EIGRP. And if I am wrong, please put it in the comments. Tell me what I did wrong. Okay, as one very famous person says, prove me wrong. Okay, prove me wrong that, you know, because this is your, this is from their website, learning, right here, learningnetwork.cisco.com. Okay, and I downloaded the blueprint. So too late to redo it, I downloaded it already. Okay, so I don't see EIGRP here anywhere. And we were promised that EIGRP wasn't gonna be there. But again, I showed you the pages, I showed you the chapters, and even in the CCMP chapter seven, I showed you what they're teaching you, okay? If you really wanna know EIGRP, if you really wanna get in depth into all the protocols, then listen, you can take my 200-120, you can take my 200-125 or my 301, okay? Because I talk about all of them. Hell, in my YouTube channel, I have configurations on EIGRP if you just wanna go there and take a look, all right? So, but as a network engineer, you need to know all this, all right? I hope I helped you guys to clarify everything about EIGRP and showing you exactly where you can find this information, okay? In the books, volume one and the CCNP book, all right? So you know where it's at. But always read those disclaimers in the book so you know what you're getting into. Do your research and find out. And please, please, please remember, comment, like it or dislike it, it don't matter to me. I want to know. Okay, if you dislike it, give me a reason. Uh, if you like it, give me a reason. 
and hit that notification bell, all right? Because I do need your help to continue to make videos and give these this information to you guys, okay? So I wish you all the all best. Good luck with your studying. Hope this helps.